What is Kick 'em to the Curb, and why is there a shuttle if the event is about doors? The idea for this first of a kind exhibit began with a door, a simple door, a door that was brought into the studio to be donated. On this door were the remains of a security system, a security system that kept the homeowners safe from intruders. It did not, however, keep the homeowners safe from the banks. This simple door was all that remained in the homeowner's possession of the home she once owned. I was struck by this image and using doors as a metaphor. Doors as a metaphor represent so many aspects of our culture, including feeling welcomed and safe through an open door, transitioning through a door to a sense of something new or the dark mystery of what might be behind the door. The people most affected by the loss of their homes have experienced the ultimate rejection and exclusion of a slam door. In order to provide a platform for truth-telling and empowerment, former homeowners will have the rare opportunity to write their stories on the inside face of the door that has been painted black like a chalkboard. They can provide a clear first-hand account of what it's like to try to desperately hold on and then eventually be made to let go. It's only human nature to want to forget the recession and all the problems that went along with it. The local media has focused on home prices on the rise and generating new tourist income. The reality is that many people are still struggling, and like an onion, we are simply peeling back the layers to reveal what is at the core. Those who are willing to tell their stories should be commended for their resilience and courage to speak up. They've certainly become phoenix-like in the rising from the ashes to doggedly search for hope beyond the next door. The rest of us have a lot to learn from these people if we are willing to listen and observe. In the eight weeks that followed, doors have come in and gone out to be painted. Artists, kids, grandparents, retired, unemployed alike have embraced the vision. Completed doors have come in from counties and galleries across Central Florida. Discarded doors have become works of art. Stories have been written about animals who have had to be discarded when families have been evicted from their homes. Dreams have been discarded in lieu of the very basic needs of life, a roof, a home, a door to close at night. These are the simple things we all want. And then there's a shuttle, built entirely out of doors. While homelessness is a global issue, the shuttle was the first thing that was kicked to the curb in Titusville and was the first domino in the downward spiral of our community. When you enter the labyrinth of doors through the payload bay of the shuttle, you will enter a labyrinth of extraordinary art and story. We would like to thank all the people who have embraced this idea, painted doors, written their stories, offering helping hands and given doors which would otherwise have ended up in the landfill. The outpouring of emotion for this global situation has been overwhelming. Due to the great response of the exhibition, the exhibit will travel across the country. The first leg of the journey will be to Palm Bay, Florida. Ultimately, the doors will be on display throughout the United States, gathering more at each location. The national tour of this exhibit will culminate in New York City, and who knows, maybe across the pond. As this is not a local problem, it's a global problem. Life was good. I was making a good salary. My wife didn't have to work. We went on vacations and bought nice things for our home. Then, one month we spent a little more than we should have and my overtime just wasn't there. So I decided to pay one of the smaller bills a couple of days late. Well, this started the snowball rolling. The next month, I was still a little short, but no problem. I used my credit card to pay the bills. But now my bills were getting larger and my income was staying the same. Next month, more borrowing, and then more borrowing. That snowball was now a boulder nipping at my heels. Life was not so good anymore. I was becoming a loser. No one ever called me that, but I knew it all the same. Then one day, I did hear it. You're a loser. It wasn't a voice. It was the telephone. I answered it and proceeded to lie to the person on the other end. Oh, yes, ma'am, I already made that payment. I don't understand what the problem is. I'll call my bank in the morning and find out what happened. During the day, there were times I could forget that I was so far behind. But then came that voice in the guise of a phone. Answer it, loser. In the end, I was one of the lucky ones. 
I had family that was able to bail me out. I have changed my ways and I hope that I will never be in that position again, but I will never forget the sleepless nights and the dreaded ringing of the phone.